Hi guys, welcome back to Will to Be Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Captain Marvel, the next installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now this will be a non-spoiler review, so if you just want to get a good impression of what the movie's going to be like without talking about any of the spoilery stuff, this is the video for you. Later on this weekend, maybe next week, I might do a uh, spoiler video. Just we'll see, see how I feel. But, this movie. Now, going into this movie... I was excited about it. You know, I mean, it's a Marvel movie, and I love Marvel movies, even the ones that I that aren't great, like Iron Man 2 or Thor The Dark World. I still enjoy the hell out of them. I mean, those are, like, bottom-tier Marvel, but they're still decent movies. I mean, in my opinion, I don't think uh, Marvel has put out a clunker yet. I'm not sure they ever will. They might, because, I mean, they're kind of, you know, swinging for the fences now, but... The question was, where was Captain Marvel going to rank on this? Now, I said I was excited about it, but honestly, the, the marketing didn't get me very excited for it. I, you know, you know like I said, it's a Marvel movie. I'm going to go see it regardless, especially with Avengers Endgame coming up in about six, seven weeks at this point, right? So, and we all know that Captain Marvel is going to play a big part in that movie, so we need to see her origin story. So, going into this movie, I was excited kind of generically excited for a new Marvel movie. And I had heard that this movie is kind of on par with some of the other other standalone Marvel movies that introduce their characters, like um, Doctor Strange or Ant-Man, where that's the first time we meet those characters. They're st solo, standalone movies that serve as origins. So that was kind of my expectations. Now, coming out of the movie, I would say Captain Marvel beat those expectations. I would say against Ant-Man and Captain Mar or Captain uh, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel is a step above and there's a ton of stuff to like about this. And let's start with the title character herself, Captain Marvel played by Brie Larson. I thought she was fantastic. Um, I don't have a lot of experience watching uh, Brie Larson in movies. I think the only movie I've seen her in is uh, Kong Skull Island, and she wasn't great in that movie because, honestly, the movie wasn't that great and she didn't have a lot to do in it. Um, but I liked her in this movie. She's cool. She's confident. She has a great sense of humor, which is going to slot right into the MCU. I can already hear her and Tony Stark and some of the other Avengers sharing quips uh, back and forth with each other, and I can't wait for that to happen. Nick Fury, young Nick Fury, or younger, youngish Nick Fury, because Samuel L. Jackson is 70 years old, and right now in real life, he probably only looks about 50 because he signed a deal with the devil or something like that. Uh, but he is maybe his best turn as Nick Fury in this movie. He, and, and maybe it's because he has a different take on the character because this movie is set in 1995. So it's not, you know, the 2000, you know, 12, 2016 Nick Fury who is older, grizzled, who has spent that time as uh, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then, you know, after S.H.I.E.L.D. collapsed and Captain America, the Winter Soldier. This is a younger Nick Fury. He's um, an agent, you know, kind of just, he's just an agent and running around going to crime scenes um, to investigate and just do that kind of stuff. So it's more youthful, it's more energetic, and I really appreciated that. And those two characters together, Captain Marvel and Nick Fury, at times they spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time together in the first half of the movie and then some more times sprinkled throughout the end and I honestly got buddy cop feels from it right you kind of have the more stoic character in Nick Fury and then you have the more light-hearted one in in Captain Marvel but they they trade quips back and forth like they've been doing it for years it just felt natural and it felt effortless uh Ben Mendelsohn who plays uh one of the scrolls is also fantastic he's been he was great uh, I loved him um, especially even when he has to like emote and you know act through what this giant rubber mask to make him look like a scroll he was fantastic uh, Lashandra Larkin I believe is her name who plays Maria Rambeau who is the the fighter pilot who was uh, uh, it was Carol's best friend in the movie she was also fantastic and she got more screen time than I expected her to do, and she owns every single minute of it. Um, the story is great. Let's talk about the story a minute because um, one of my biggest complaints with Doctor Strange was that it basically felt like a carbon copy of 
Iron Man's origin story, right? Um, you have this person who is at the top of their field, whether it's, you know, business and technology or with Doctor Strange, it was, you know, he's a surgeon, he's at the, you know, the top of his game, he's the best in the business. They come crashing down back to Earth, they have their ego shattered, and they have to rebuild themselves. Um, so, and that it could also be the same for, um, it could be said for Thor, right? So a lot of very similar parallels in those origin stories. I really appreciate the way this movie plays out her origin story. Because at the beginning, she already has her powers. She's part of uh, the Kree Star Force. And things happen and she starts to think, you know, maybe my life hasn't been as it seems. We start to get flashbacks of her time on Earth. And it's just fantastic the way it plays out because it was played out in a way that we haven't seen before in the Marvel Universe, and it was kind of refreshing to see that, to see that this origin movie, or origin story, wasn't just another copy of something else that we've already seen before. Very refreshing. Also something that was very refreshing and very cool to see was, this movie is set in 1995, and they do a fantastic job of leaning into that 90s, especially with the soundtrack. The soundtrack is awesome you know takes me back to those mid to late 90s you'll recognize just about every song that they play and they're usually pretty pitch perfect for the scenes that they're in also there's smaller stuff like in the first trailer we see her fall into a blockbuster video which was great there's some other stores that they point out some other just you know touchstones of the 90s that make me feel nostalgic i was born in 86 so around this time i was about nine or ten when this movie is set so a lot of those things are like the touchstones of my childhood especially blockbuster then there's you know posters for the smashing pumpkins um all kinds of stuff like that i love the tone that they strike in this movie because it feels very flashbacky and there are a couple one-liners in this um that on the surface i felt like that's kind of a clunky one-liner from what we have known to grow and love in the mcu but then i was like wait a minute I felt like a 90s one-liner, so I feel like even the script writers leaned into uh, finding that tonality of the 90s again, and it comes off fantastically. So, um, one last thing, one last character that I haven't mentioned, and that's Goose the Cat. And if you want to know what I feel about Goose the Cat coming out of this movie, well, here it is. They had these at the concession stand at the movie, and I don't buy Funko Pops. The one you see right here behind me is the only other Funko Pop that I own. After the movie was over and credits rolled, and there are two post-credit scenes. There's one in the mid-credits that's super important, and then there's one at the very end of the movie that's funny. After all of that, I walked right straight back out to the concession stand and bought me a Funko Pop of Goose the Cat. I'm... I... I'm going to call him the new Groot. Goose Goose might be the new Groot of, of the Marvel Universe. He's fantastic. Love him. Not going to spoil anything, but he it's, it's fantastic. So guys, overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I would say it's a solid 8 out of 10. I don't normally rate movies or give numeric or, um, you know, ratings like that, but if I had to put one to it, I'd say this is a solid 8 out of 10. It doesn't, didn't blow me away like a Captain America Winter Soldier or Civil War or one of the Avengers movies, but I wasn't expecting it to. I got a great origin story. I got to see some younger versions of characters we know and love and got introduced to a brand new badass character in Captain Marvel. I'm planning on seeing it again. I saw it by myself tonight. Probably in a couple weeks, I'll take my wife to go see it. And then when it hits Blu-ray or hits Netflix, I'll probably watch it a handful of more times in preparation for Avengers Endgame because I cannot wait for that movie. So guys, have you seen Captain Marvel? Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. And let's keep those comments spoiler-free for at least a couple weeks so people have a chance to get out and go see it. So thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here at the channel, hit that subscribe button for me or that side, whichever I saw it, I put it on. Maybe check out one of these other videos here at the channel. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop or the cinema. Thanks.